Section 17 of Christmas and Christmas Lore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Christmas and Christmas Lore by Thomas G. Crippen. Legendary mystical and modern carols some of the old carols are very rich in legendary lore sometimes from the apocryphal gospels sometimes from sources which cannot now be identified there are often comical adaptions of oriental matters to western surroundings and in the famous cherry tree carol which tree in the original legend is a date palm joseph is an old man walking with his young bride in a garden gay where cherries were growing on every spray he is troubled with a fit of jealousy and when mary asks him for cherries he replies in rude language suggesting doubts as to the truth of the message which he has had from the angel but his doubts are soon dispelled and his jealousy rebuked for mary said to the cherry tree bow down to my knee that i may gather cherries by one two and three the uppermost bow then bowed down to her knee now you see joseph those cherries were for me Joseph asked pardon for his unjust suspicions, and ere long an angel tells him that our heavenly king will shortly appear. He shall not be born in house or in hall, nor in the place of paradise, but in an ox's stall. He shall not be wrapped in purple nor in pall, but in fair white linen as unsend babies all he shall not be rocked in silver nor in gold but in a wooden manger that resteth on the mould the charming simplicity of these lines is imitable in a less widely known carol the carnal and the crane the minstrel who evidently understands the language of birds repeats an overheard confabulation between a crane and a carnal presumably a carrion crow french cornille they narrate two old legends both of medieval origin first the wise men tell herod that christ is born if this be true king herod said which thou tellest to me this roasted cock that lies in the dish shall crow full fences three the cock soon freshly feathered was by the work of god's old hand and he crew christus natus est in the dish where he did stand the holy family journey toward egypt the wild beast worshipped the child and he is recognized and honored by a husbandman who is sowing corn god speed thee man said jesus go fetch thy ox and wain and the corn which thou this day hast sown go carry it home again the harvest thus miraculously hastened is reaped and loaded then there comes king herod with his train so furiously inquiring of the husbandman whether jesus passed by the husbandman replies that jesus passed this way when my seed was sown and herod retreats thinking it must be full quarters of a year since his seed has sown some of the carols represent the infant christ as predicting his passion in one of them mary is weeping at the recital now peace mother now peace mother your weeping doth me grieve 
for I must suffer this, he says, for Adam and for Eve. Some carols of the holy childhood are not over-reverent. The wavy carol, for example, of which variants are found in Herefordshire and in Ireland, in this the child Jesus is insulted by three boys. To prove his superiority over them, he builds a bridge of sunbeams on which they attempt to follow him over the sea, but fall in and are drowned. For this, Mary chastises him with a green withy, and he avenges himself by a curse on the entire species. The withy shall be the very first tree that perishes at the heart. This is much on the lines of the worst things in the apocryphal gospels. In the carol of the holy well, which seems to be of rather later origin, we are on far higher moral ground. The child Jesus, having asked of his mother if he might go to play, goes as far as the holy well, but is repulsed by the other children, lords and ladies, sons, whom he finds there. Mary hears of it and is angry and begs him to take away those sinful souls and plunge them deep in hell. Nay, nay, sweet Jesus mildly said, nay, nay, that must not be. There are too many sinful souls crying out for the help of me. Of numeral carols such as the Twelve Articles, Twelve Points, and the like, little needs to be said. Their form is probably due to a fanciful association with the Twelve Days of Christmas. Otherwise, they would be equally suitable to any other season. The same may be said of Dives and Lazarus, Jacob's Ladder, The Boy's Dream, The Seven Virgins, and others which, without any intelligible reason, are found in Christmas chapbooks. We seem to have no English specimens of the satirical carols which are heard in France, especially in Brittany, wherein the singers of one village indulge in seasonable gibs at those of another but we have carols which seem to have been originally mystical or allegorical but to be so corrupted by oral tradition as to have become mere nonsense verses such are christmas day in the morning and that class of numeral carols of which the seven joys is a fair sample a mystical or allegorical carol beginning lully lully the falcon has borne my mate away is assigned to the fourteenth century it contains evident allusions to the altar the sacrament and perhaps to some incidents in the legend of the holy grail but the meaning is by no means easy to determine a mystical carol of considerable length and by no means devoid of beauty is ascribed to john audley a blind monk of hogmond abbey salop the style is that of the early fifteenth century the following are a few stanzas there is a flower sprung of a tree the root thereof is called jesse a flower of price there is none such in paradise. The seed thereof was God's sond, that God himself sowed with his hand. In Bethlehem, in that holy land, amidst her harbor, he there her fanned. This blissful flower sprang never but in Mary's bower. Angels there came out of their tower to look upon this freshly flower how fair he was in his color and to behold how such a flower might spring in gold 
I pray the flowers of this country, where ye go, where ye be, hold up the flower of good Jesse for your freshness and your beauty, as fairest of all, and ever was, and ever shall. Happily, one of the best of the English mystical carols has come down to us without serious corruption. In this, the singer personates our Lord. It is the event of his marriage with his true love, the church. Tomorrow shall be my dancing day. I would my true love so did chance to see the legend of my play, to call my true love to my dance. In a manger laid and wrapped I was, so very poor, this was my chance between an ox and a silly poor ass, to call my true love to my dance. The incidents of his baptism, fasting, and temptation, his betrayal and passion, are similarly told. Then down to hell I took my way for my true love's deliverance, and rose again on the third day, up to my true love and the dance. Then up to heaven I did ascend, where now I dwell in sure substance, at the right hand of God that men may come into the general dance. Several of the Elizabethan poets wrote carols of a more refined character. We have good ones from the pens of Herrick, Wither, and other poets of the time of Charles I. But the ascendancy of Puritanism was, for the time, as fatal to carols as to maypoles. After the Restoration there were festive songs in plenty, but few carols. The rustic muse here and there produced godly ballads of the childhood and life of Jesus, some of which, of great length, still do duty for carols or did so quite lately in various places but all ye that are to mirth inclined faithful christians the black decree and coleman's carol though not bad of their kind have not the artless spontaneity of the true carol by far the best of the class is the famous song of nahum tate where shepherds watch their flocks by night which has served to keep from oblivion a name that else had deserved to be dragged down to the deepest pool of leth by the dead weight of his new version of the psalms and his perversions of shakespeare but the song is a pious ballad not a carol the festive element is lacking. There is no dance in it, unless perchance it be sung to the old rollicking tune of nativity. It forms a kind of transition from the true carols to the hymns of which the Methodist revival brought forth such a glorious harvest. But who needs to be reminded of Hark! The Herald Angels Sing or Christians Awake or angels from the realms of glory or brightest and best or it came upon the midnight clear hone writing in eighteen twenty three gave a list of eighty-five carols which he had collected of this he says it excludes all that are disused at the present time nor does it contain any of the numerous compositions printed by religious societies under the denomination of carols. Of these, about half have appeared in chapbooks within the last thirty years, but nine or ten of them are really hymns. When Hone wrote, it seemed as if the singing of carols had almost died out except in remote country places extinguished by the utilitarian spirit of the age carols he said begin to be spoken of as not belonging to this century 
but a new generation arose which had eyes to see that the past however faulty was not wholly bad careful editors and enterprising publishers made familiar to the public the best of the old carols with their proper tunes as well as translations from alien sources and modern poets imbued with the true christmas spirit have produced many new carols scarcely inferior to the old end of section 17 recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc